look at all these stars. Hundreds of thousands of them. Surely one of them, more than one, must be capable of supporting life. Maybe here in this swarm of stars, the Great Cluster. Back in the 1970s, astronomers sent a message in this direction, detailing the structure of our DNA and our solar system's location. But the message won't arrive here for another 25,000 years. We haven't found alien life yet. But neither have we found any reason to believe it isn't out there, somewhere. There's an equation devised to estimate the number of other advanced civilizations. The result is startling. There could be millions of civilizations just in our own galaxy. Everything we've seen so far is inside the Milky Way. Now we're ready to leave our home galaxy, to enter intergalactic space. Here's our chance to solve the ultimate mystery and experience the moment of creation. Beyond the Milky Way, through the vast expanse between galaxies, against all the odds, we've made it to intergalactic space. Out here, there's no horizon in sight. Even the closest galaxies are hundreds of thousands of light years away. The remains of galaxies ripped apart by the Milky Way's huge gravitational pull, scattered among nothing. This is as close as the universe gets to a perfect vacuum. But even this isn't totally empty. There are thin wisps of gas, fine traces of dust, and something else. Dark matter, so mysterious we can't see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, or even measure it. Yet so common, it could make up over 90% of all the matter in the universe. If dark matter does exist, it means there's no such thing as empty space. Even out here, we're surrounded by matter. We think it exists because of its apparent hold on galaxies, like this one, the Large Magellanic Cloud. A six billion year journey in today's fastest spacecraft, 160,000 light years from the Milky Way at the edge of its gravitational reach. This galaxy should spin off into space but something is holding it here, something invisible, powerful, dark matter. Stars, clusters of stars, nebulae. It's a vast astronomical treasure trove. Look at this. It's like a string of gleaming pearls. It's a fireball expanding out from what must have been a massive explosion, a supernova. 
so bright that when light from the explosion reached Earth 20 years ago, it was visible to the naked eye. And so violent, it triggered a string of nuclear reactions forcing atoms together, creating new elements. Gold, silver, platinum, blasting them out into space. The gold in the ring on your finger was forged in a massive supernova like this, trillions of miles away, billions of years ago. Before we left home, the universe seemed separate, something out there, up in the sky. But now we know better. We are the universe, and it is within us. It's comforting to remember as we venture through this abyss. Further and further. Faster and faster. The Andromeda Galaxy, two and a half million light years away. It's racing through space. Everything blown apart like shrapnel in an explosion. We're seeing this galaxy as it was when our ape-like ancestors first walked on the African plains. Further through space, and further back in time. Hold on, this doesn't look right. A whole galaxy exploding? The only thing large enough to cause an explosion on this scale is another galaxy. It looks like the end of the world. But this galaxy won't die, it'll be reborn, a new shape perhaps even new stars, as dust and gas collide, creating friction, shock waves, triggering the birth of stars. There's order in this chaos, a pattern behind the infinite variety, an endless cycle of birth and death, creation and destruction. It's a pattern woven through the vast fabric of space that binds each of these galaxies. There are billions of galaxies, each with billions, even trillions of stars. Maybe more stars than there are grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. finally beginning to see the big picture. And it's grander than we ever imagined. This galaxy, the huge pinwheel galaxy, is so far from Earth that if we send a message home now, it will take 27 million years to get there. Who knows whether our species, our planet, will still be around to receive it. Past the point where the dinosaurs were wiped out. Past the moment where the first creatures crawled onto land. Two billion light years from home, closing in on the edge of the universe, going back to the beginning of time. This isn't a galaxy. It's brighter than a hundred galaxies. A blinding beam of energy surging for trillions of miles.
something this big, this bright, must be incredibly powerful. Experience tells us, out here, power equals danger. It looks like a quasar, the deadliest thing in the universe. Our journey could be over. The deadliest, most powerful thing in the universe. A quasar. A swirling cauldron of superheated gas. supermassive black hole as heavy as a billion suns. It's ripping apart whole stars, devouring them until they're nothing, lost forever from the visible universe. We think, we hope, we pray we've seen the worst the universe can throw at us, but no one can know what lies ahead. to go further, go faster. Eight billion light years from home, more galaxies, but these look different, ragged, small, close together. We're so far back in time, we're seeing these galaxies as they were before the Earth was born. They're still young, still growing. We're getting close to where and how it all began. Look at the galaxies now. They're more like primitive plankton floating in a vast dark ocean. Clouds of dust and gas dancing, twirling, merging to make embryonic galaxies. before the stars were born into a cosmic dark age. And before that, light, the afterglow from the massive explosion that created the known universe. This is it. We've made it. The edge of the universe. 80 billion.